Friday. It's the first day of April 2022. Your day weather podcast exclusively brought to you by Cowboy State Daily, Wyoming's news authority. Visit them at CowboyStateDaily.com and on their Facebook page. Well, I'm not going to be pulling any April Fool's Day pranks, so everything I'm going to send to you is to be taken seriously. Can't do that with the weather. Can't joke around with it. April is going to start off with a very typical weather pattern. We're going to first of all talk about Will there be a chance for the Aurora Borealis again? There is that potential. And as we uh, take a look, the weekend is going to be a typical pattern for this time of year. For you folks up in northern Wyoming, western South Dakota, western North Dakota and Montana, and up into the Pacific Northwest, there's a little wave that's going to get you Saturday with some rain and snow. There's a small weather system that's going to bring snow to the high country of southwestern and south central Colorado during the day on Sunday. That'll be good for the mountain areas. So we've got a northern system and a southern system. Not much going on in the middle this weekend. Then we have that strong Pacific jet stream wind we've been talking about driving in. As we get into late Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week, this is going to form a northern plain storm, bring in a good shot of snow to the mountains, and make it cold and blustery and not nice across the plains. So Uh, There's not going to be a lot of great weather over the next week. When we do have good days, they will be good, but they're going to be interrupted by these systems. Overall, the first 10 days of April is going to be chilly, folks. I'm afraid to say April will be off to a cold start despite the relatively mild temperatures this weekend. And for livestock interests and travelers, I want to highlight the time frame of April 10th to April 20th. I'm getting more confident we're going to see some pretty stormy weather in the western half of the U.S. during that time frame. Too early for details, but for anybody in calving and lambing operations, anybody planning on traveling between those dates, around those dates, I think we've got some weather to contend with, and we'll show you that here in a minute. Now, quick update on the Aurora situation. The sun full of sunspots also in both hemispheres, uh, which is typical when you get a really active sun pattern. This sunspot area did send out another flare yesterday, and we saw a steep drop in the cosmic ray count across the globe, the cosmic rays coming from space and coming from the sun. They'll fluctuate as these waves of energy come off the sun. Yesterday it was at 8.2, today it's dropped down to 5.9. That's just an interesting tidbit, just to show you that the sun really does interact a lot with our upper atmosphere and overall the dynamics of the weather overall and the climate. So we always want to keep an eye on those things. If you were to look at where the Aurora is early this morning, it got pretty far south across southern Canada, also across Europe, northern Europe, and across the other side of the globe, all of Alaska, all of Canada under the Aurora this morning. Here's the flare that came out yesterday. So what does this mean? Could there be another outbreak of Aurora Borealis? this far south, mainly tonight, possibly Saturday night? The answer is yes. Uh, But as we've seen and as we have talked about before when we've talked about auroras, trying to predict these is really, really tricky, other than to tell you whether the probability is higher or not, and it is for the next couple of nights. So for you sky watchers out there, you might want to look north again. Probably going to be really hard to beat what happened earlier this week, but you never know with these things. Taking a look at radar, we see a nice area of rain and snow shower activity associated with last night's low pressure system and trough moving on through. We saw some really nice moisture up in the Black Hills of Wyoming and South Dakota overnight. Quarter of an inch of rain and snow in the Casper area. Some of the mountains got upwards to a half inch of water with the front as it moved through last night. So good news there. This is it right here. You can see the trough sliding its way through. So it's going to head off to the east, and this is going to allow this little bit of high pressure to slide into the Rockies this weekend. But we have other waves back here in the flow that will keep on zipping on through from the Pacific Northwest through the Northern Rockies. And here's the next little wave right here. This is by noon Saturday. So for Washington, Oregon, Idaho, across Montana, Northern Wyoming, the Dakotas, the system will zip east during the day Saturday and the Saturday night. There's going to be rain and snow shower activity with that front as it moves through. Unfortunately, for central Wyoming into Colorado, it's going to make it a little on the breezy side this weekend. Yes, the weather will be better, but it will be a little on the windy side. Those northern areas will get some showers. Now, this is by Sunday night. It doesn't look like much, but you see this little dip right here? 
there's going to be a pocket of low pressure and a pocket of Pacific moisture moving across southern Utah into central and southern Colorado. And this is going to produce a mountain snow Sunday, Sunday night into Monday morning into the southern and southwest mountains of Colorado, maybe the central Colorado mountains, especially along and south of I-70. So that'll be good to bring more moisture our way. Then here you go. You can really see those very strong jet stream winds coming in across the North Pacific. And that's going to drive in precipitation. And you can see it right here coming into the coast areas by Monday. What I'm showing you here is the total precipitation forecast through Monday afternoon. So you can see the wave going across the northern areas here during the day Saturday into Sunday. Here's this secondary wave going across southern Utah and southern Colorado during the day Sunday, but not much in between. So two little systems, one here, one going across the northern Rockies. This is typical April. You'll get these small systems doing this, but the good news is these frequent little systems, if you add them up, do add up over time in terms of needed spring moisture coming, and this will be good for the snowpack. Now, going out further, this is for Monday afternoon. That strong Pacific jet stream wind is just going to drive heavy precipitation into western British Columbia and the coastal areas right here. Some of that moisture gets over the divide, and what we'll end up with is a low forming over the Dakotas by Tuesday into Wednesday. This low right here, the counterclockwise spin around it, is going to drive in cold air into the Rockies and the High Plains. So it's going to get kind of raw Tuesday and Wednesday with colder, windy conditions. Mountain snow could be pretty significant Monday night and Tuesday, then some rain and snow, wind and cold on the plains. So stock growers are going to get kind of raw here Tuesday and Wednesday. Keep that in mind. High pressure builds in behind it. So what we're going to see is a start to the week, Tuesday and Wednesday, that'll be windy, blustery, and cold. High pressure moves in by the end of next week and probably lasts into Saturday. But right up here is a pretty good pocket of cold, moist, unstable Pacific air that is going to drive its way southeast into the region. And what will happen is, is that the high pressure comes in on Friday. The low in the Plain States heads to the Great Lakes and could be a pretty good looking storm for those folks there. But we've got a lot going on right here. And what's going to happen going forward is we're going to see high pressure start to grow up into the Aleutians here. And this is going to center a large area of colder, unsettled air into the western United States and an overall general pattern of low pressure in the Rockies, the Pacific Northwest, and into the Northern Plains by next weekend. So this is why we say starting around the 10th of April and going out further, it's going to get colder, it's going to get unsettled, but I can't give you any details other than watch April 10th to April 20th. Then you can see the temperature forecast for the next week is colder than average when we look at overall general trends for next week and next weekend, and really across a lot of the U.S., April is going to be off to a bit of a cold start. This is for the 13th of April. One system coming into here, then another system coming in right behind it later on. So we need to keep our eyes on things. When you take a look at the forecast of precipitation over the next two weeks, it's pretty impressive. Now, whether or not it ends up looking like this, now we'll take that with a grain of salt. But the trend, remember in long range weather forecasting, trend is your friend. So we're seeing a trend between that 10th and 20th of April. If you were to look at the new Japanese model that came out yesterday, we like to look at this for long term trends. What we're showing is that retrogression of the high back towards the western side of the Gulf of Alaska. You see the blue here? The blue represents in the next 10 days an area of low pressure in the northern half of the country in the western United States in a cooling trend. And if we go out further, this takes us into the middle of April. We see a, an elongated trough from the Gulf of Alaska into the northern plains, the northern Rockies, and the Pacific Northwest. That is a cooler, wetter weather pattern. So that's why those trends are likely going to be changing as we get a little bit deeper into April. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you on Monday.